Okay, in this video I'm gonna attempt to do the Ruger the roll of a friction fire technique. And I've seen it done with some sting nettles. I've been out and gathered some sting nettles, but it's the middle of winter. And unfortunately there's all the fibers that I want on the outside seem to have rotted and only seems to be the main stem. But I'm gonna attempt to pick off some of the fibers. And when I was gathering this, there was some cleavers that are dried in amongst it which was a lot finer which I'm gonna hope might be a secondary backup as well. I'm just going through this now and it's really difficult to find any fibers. Try and do the sort of bend and pull off technique. So I'll get the thumbnails down in there but not proving to get really any fibers. I've got a couple there. Let's keep them in my hand. And there's sort of 85% humidity out there. It's really damp. It hasn't actually rained really hard for about a week or two now, but it's been drizzling and low cloud. So I'm not expecting this to go straight away, although putting the friction into it may warm it up enough. Yeah, and there's just not really any fibres coming off there, so what I'm going to do now is search for any of the smaller stems. Just working my way down to see if it is possible. I don't think it is, so what I'm going to do now is just gather the really fine, almost like straw type pieces. Just put my right hand down on top of it now and just keep pulling between my thumb and my finger, leaving the main big stalks down there and just sort of grabbing up the little tiny bits. Right, there we go. That should be enough to make a bit of a ball and a sort of cigar shape and then I've seen people do this with like just a fibre like this and then put an ash into it, a bit of charcoal. I've done it before with cotton wool and a lovely split piece of ash that I had but survival situation, we've only got what we've got so we haven't got a lovely great big log. I haven't got any flat stones. So what I've got about me was all I could gather, I suppose, with my knife. That's what I'm gonna use, just my just my survival knife. I mean, if I had axes and saws, I could use those. But anyway, it's a bit damp. So that first bundle, a little bit out of shot there, but I'm just putting it out my sleeve and just shutting the wrist on my coat there just to keep that warm. Or it could go in one of your pockets, it's just, I'm sitting down doing this right so here's a log and that's about as big as I can process with my survival knife without a great big axe or saw and remember we're doing this for survival situations it's all about energy in and energy out right using the least amount of work because you're not going to have any replenished energy right I'm going to need to split this down the middle and that bit's too long so I'm going to need to chop that I'm just going to get myself a bit of a log there to cut onto. Just find something to chop onto. But if you're out now in the forest or in the woods, you do this against a branch, dead fall branch or one that was low to the ground. So branches are designed not to snap straight, but they're weak on the angle. So first cut will be just an end of the log, just a little tiny cut not using loads of energy and that's 45 that way and I'll do another 45 the other way make like a notch and then hopefully turn the knife over back of the knife anvil it on your log just get it 45 degrees and a little snack and there she breaks right we just need to split that now and hopefully get an equal sort of split so I'm just going to look down it to see if there's any obvious ways it might split. There's a bit of a line down the bark there, so just sorry, just a bit out of shot there, but I'm just sizing it up, ready to split it, hopefully. Right, no dangerous cuts. That was too unstable, so hold the log you want to split with the knife using the other bit. Make sure it just goes down, it's just a little bit unstable there. Just wobbling around a little bit there. Right, get your other log, heel of the knife, and just give it a little bat on. Try not to let the knife go into the end of the soil there. I should have had that on a chopping block. 
Right. Now what I've found is sort of split pretty perfectly equal. Put it back together the way it goes. Now in theory those two surfaces should sort of be flat. It's catching a little bit. I'm just going to see if it slides nice. Catching a little bit. Right, so I'm going to need to just trim that down. I'm going to look inside of it. The middle bit. One middle bit's left the channel. And the other bit's left the sort of first inner growth. I'm just going to shave that off. Just try and keep the knife as flat as possible. When you find these snags, just elevate it. I'm just trying to keep it as flat as possible. Tiny little strokes. And remember, in the survival situations, energy in, energy out. That's the equation. So when you're watching lots of these techniques, look at what they're using. Look at the tools they're using. Look at whether they're standing up. Look how much energy they're going to use to do something. I'm going to a little bit of a trim at the back there and just just letting this almost the back of the knife be like a, a level guide and you can see there's a little bit of wood left in there that's just that first growth and I say one bit stuck in one side and the other bit stuck in the other side so it was a perfect split just gonna go on to that bit now and just tiny tiny I don't want to sort of do any grooves in there so keeping the knife as flat as possible Little tiny strokes backwards and forwards. So resting my hand that's holding the knife, my elbow on my knee. Trying to sit him down, trying not to use any energy. Right, that looks quite flat now. So, let's give it another test to just see whether it slides. Make a bit of use of. Yeah, that's a lot better. There you go, sliding perfectly. Right, I'm happy with that. On with the next stage. Right, so let's get the little roll of fibres out of my sleeve. Sorry again, just out of shot. If I can find it, there it is. Seems to go right up there, not a very good magician. Right, just to see whether that's warmed up a bit. It's still a little bit cold, but it's got warmer, definitely got a lot warmer. And drier it's warmer to the touch that's how I know it's drier but the log unfortunately that's been out in the rain and that is cold so that means that is damp so will I have to dry this out overnight and this is again survival situation don't wait till you need something don't wait till you're hungry don't wait till you're thirsty get your water sorted before and your food sorted if you can before and and your fire options sorted before you need them this may take a day or two drying out and again with the bowdrill and all the other techniques, okay? Go out, learn them, just try and start with the basics and then just remember, it's all about the weather. Right, I'm gonna lay that out now, as you can see, just untangling it, sorry. I'm just gonna lay that down and just check it with my finger to make sure it's sort of even. And I'm just gonna put a bit of ash into it. So I got a log for my fire yesterday. I'm just going to tap the ash off and a tiny little bit of charcoal is going to come with it. I think the charcoal is going to inhibit it. Obviously something that's charged should catch. Just rub a nice bit of ash all the way down. Good sprinkling, good seasoning of ash. It's like being a chef reminds me of that does. It's like making a recipe, like making some sort of pastry. Right, a bit of charcoal on there. Just going to check there's no lumps. I've got a tiny little bit of charcoal in my hand. That's really dry. Hopefully, if anything, if the grass or the fibre sort of damp that may absorb it and then I'll have to dry this out overnight. A lot of things I find when they're damp, especially in this country in Great Britain where it seems to rain constantly or be humid. It's different if you're watching them in other countries where it's really dry. Quite often they work the next day once they've had time to dry it in your pocket overnight by the fire and there you can see I'm just rolling that up now making that into a little roll as tight as I can but not worrying about too much then just rolling it the same way just trying now to get I suppose a lot of the air gaps out that's going to which so cool it down and I'll just get rid of the knife in a minute I don't need that Yeah, like I say, 
and you're looking at techniques, think, could I do that? If I haven't had any food for two days, if I haven't had any sleep for two days, um, and if I was feeling weak, and go out and just imagine like the last time you felt rubbish, how much energy it took just to, know, to open a can of beans or even just to go to the toilet, I don't know. Right, let's get on with this now. Let's roll it right down. Yeah, it's becoming quite tight now. It kind of looks like there's a bit too much charcoal on there. Right, let's tap the rest of that off. I'm just going to polish that down now. I suppose I shouldn't be getting any grease on my hands on there either. Maybe there's enough charcoal on my hands. Right, put that bundle back up my sleeve to keep dry so it's not on the floor. The floor is definitely a bit wet. Right, let's give them another clean off. I suppose what I could do carried on rubbing these together and opposite, opposite like that, I could make them a lot flatter, I suppose it's left to have the knife to split them, but like I said, I've seen other techniques where you just use stones, flat stones, but I haven't got any, right, that is sort of the kit, I suppose, quite simple isn't it, quite simple to make, now we just have to get the technique right, and hopefully it's dry enough. Right, so tinder bolt, bundle, out from my sleeve. And it's that rolling it between my hands. I know with the fire bone drill, they say don't get any grease on the end of the drill. I don't know. But anyway, right, so I'm gonna just a little few rolls. I'm trying to put the pressure as I roll it forward. I'm trying to be clever and sort of lightly roll it back, a bit like you do with a saw just trying to get it really squashed now. I suppose it's a mixture of friction and static. Although you're, you're putting that friction and that force is stored in there as heat, but I know static, the static everywhere, and I've discovered how to get the last throws out of a gas lighter by rubbing on some on some sort of nylon clothing. And you get the static heats up the gas. Anyway, this is going to be about friction, first of all. Again, just trying to lock my wrists off now, trying to not use all my energy in one hand. I can't smell anything yet. You don't notice much smoke though, first of all. It's, it's kind of strange. It's almost like it catches fire inside. And we just have to sort of tease it to get the oxygen into it to get it to glow. I'm happy with the kit I made and how simple that was without using loads of tools. It's starting to get quite flat now and just roll there quite nicely. If we can't get this going tonight, this will go in my pocket or above the fire or next to the fire tonight. Yeah, so I'm already using a lot of energy now. I say, if I had an endless supply of hamburgers now, I'd probably keep going with that. I'm just going to take that to my nose. I can't smell anything yet. I'm just going to just be very... I say it's hard to notice first of all. You need to sort of do a good couple of hard rolls. And I'm just trying to give it that magic, really hard few presses forward, trying to slip. I suppose one thing I could have done is the bottom log. I could have shaved that down a little bit now, thinking about it. I made that a little bit flatter. What I might do. All about improvement, observation, improvement. Especially if you watched another video, you've seen this done before. If you know something works, you know it works. So it's just about making it work and looking at why it might not be working. Now, definitely not getting any smell of smoke there at all. And the bundle is maybe a little bit too long. All right, let's give it one final go. If it doesn't go this time. I'm going to revisit it after I've dried everything out. I might even go look for some more fibres because it's going to rain. It's supposed to forecast is for heavy rain in a couple of hours. It's already getting quite damp, so I use this opportunity to go and get the last bits of tinder. Try some of that bracket fungus I found. I showed one of the last videos. Got some King Alfred's cake. All of that it was quite quickly, and if not, I just go back with the ash, which is what I've done before. I mean, I'm no works. I didn't put any charcoal into it last time. Right, let's 
breaking right down the fibres now, almost into what I could have done with it first of all, to tell you the truth. I'm just going to check that. Yeah, they're not warm. So, there you go, that's the kit made. I think I might keep that dry, keep it up the sleeve, dry that out, give a little bit more work on that, like I said, and revisit that later on. Anyway, thanks for watching that. Hopefully you succeed in the next video.